Good afternoon. You guys didn't want to give me any love this morning. What's up? This is the 12 o'clock. You guys should be awake right now. Are y'all awake? Come on. You came to receive God's word, so you need to be ready to receive God's word today. Today is going to be a great day. Just like Pastor Will said, we are here uh, just to learn a little bit more about Joshua and the Joshua generation and uh, how to live a courageous life. And I cannot think of anybody else that has lived more courageously than those that have served in our armed forces. I know we've given you guys some love already today, but if you have served in our military, would you mind just to stand up so we can just appreciate and love on you today? If anybody has served within our military, yeah, give them a hand clap. Hey, if they're near you, give them a fist bump, give them a high five, tell them we love them, tell them thank you. You guys are amazing. You you truly display what it means to live a courageous life. Whenever you, uh, the Bible says that whenever you lay down your life for a friend, then that is what true love is. You guys have shown what true love is, even even though uh, you may not believe that or feel that today. But today we're starting a brand new series, as we said, about uh, the book of Joshua and the Joshua generation. And the Joshua generation is basically like a next generation of new leaders that are up and coming uh, after the Moses generation and. And so these are like young adults and, and teenagers and, and children that are coming up in this Joshua generation. This is actually what I lead here at the church is the next gen ministries here with our young adults and our, our teens and our children. You may see me in Creek Kids a lot. And uh, so I have an emphasis on, on that on Sundays, but it's a pleasure of mine. It's, it's a love of mine. It's what God has called me to do to be here to serve um, for the next gen. That's what he spoke over my life. And so it's a pleasure for me to be able to do that. And I may not be doing it at the level that Joshua was, but I'm doing it at some kind of level, right? All right. But today we're um, just going to take a deep dive into the book of Joshua. And we're uh, specifically Joshua chapter one is what we're going to dive into. But before we get to Joshua one, we have to know a little bit about what happened before Joshua began to take over. And this is where Moses was promised by God to be able to take the Israelites out of Egypt and we read about this in the book of Exodus, and Exodus actually means escape, or for those of you that watch Nemo, it is escape. It's the great escape. And so you read about Moses being promised, and he's going to lead the Israelites out of Egypt, and uh, he's going to take them out of the slavery. And as he does, he has to go before Pharaoh and, and to lead them out. And so they do, and they take them out of Egypt. They're leading them into the promised land, and what God promised them, the land of milk and honey. Now, back then, milk and honey would be equivalent to like milk and double stuffed Oreos. And I don't know if you're like me, I have a major sweet tooth. And so, if it is a land that is filled with milk and double stuffed Oreos, sign me up. I'm gonna go. Is anybody else gonna go with me? Yeah, yeah okay, we got five. Yeah, yeah, double stuffed. Whatever your flavor is, I mean, whatever it is. But he tells him this is the land flowing with milk and honey. This is where you're gonna go. This is the promised land. This is land is gonna be yours for the taking for you and your family and generations to come. And so now leading up into this point, Moses' generation is now being passed off to, to Joshua. As Moses had passed, Joshua is now about to take the mantle. And so we're gonna read about this in Joshua chapter one. So if you got your, your Bibles, you can go ahead and pull those out. If you got your iPhone, and God forbid you have a Samsung, pull that out. Just go to your Bible app and let's, let's go to um, Joshua chapter one, verse nine, or one through nine, I'm sorry. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, Joshua son of Nun, Moses' aid, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now then, you and all these people get ready to cross the Jordan River into the land that I'm about to give them to the Israelites. I will give you every place where you set your foot, as I have promised to Moses. Now, this land was already theirs. It just took them like 40 years to be able to get there. They're just running in circles. Some of, you, some of y'all feel like you've been running in circles for like 40 years. God's about to lead you straight. All right, it says this, your territory will extend from the desert to Lebanon and from the great river, the Euphrates and all the high tight country to the Mediterranean Sea in the West. No one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. He didn't say that no one would stand against you. He said that no one would be able to. Sometimes we have people that in our life that try to stand against us, right? But we serve a God that goes before us and that he will never fail us or leave us. Now, if you guys feel comfortable, you can say amen or that's good. It's totally okay. You can talk to me while I'm up here. I don't have to be the only one. All right, he says, as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and courageous because you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to their ancestors to give to them. 
Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey the law my servant Moses gave to you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left that you may be successful wherever you go. Meditate on my word and don't turn from it. You will be successful. Do not let this book of the law depart from your mouth, but meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything that is written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, let your word be in our minds and in our hearts, and let us live it out in our life to be courageous for you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, now, Joshua's term in office had started at somewhat of a perilous time. Uh, he was about to go into a land and take it over, and the people that... Uh, that lived in the land weren't necessarily wanting to give up the land so much. They had no idea that Joshua was about to come in and take it over. But if they did, they were going to, Joshua and the army was going to be met with some trouble that was ahead of them. And this is a big step up for Joshua because Joshua had only been taking a back seat to be able to see the leadership of Moses during this time. See, Joshua was born into slavery while he was in Egypt. And it wasn't until he was 40 years old until he, they were taken out of captivity. And then he got to see the leadership of Moses for another 40 years. And he starts living as a leader as he, whenever he's 85 years old. And I've met any 85-year-olds in here. You just say, if God's not dead, God's not, or if you're not dead, God's not done. Because it doesn't matter how old you are. God can still use you, even if you're 85. Amen? Amen. Come on, somebody. All right. So this is his step in life that he's going to take. He was the VP for a while, but now God is calling him up to another task. God is asking him to step and to lead, lead these people into the promised land. It was not an easy task, but what he shows us is one, and for, this is for my military people, is you have to embrace the suck. Sometimes it's just going to be tough. If you're not military, you don't know what I'm talking about. For those of you the military are, and I won't say that word again in here, but it's a military term, okay? So don't get, don't get in a wad right now. But what he shows us is that courage is a choice. It's not a feeling. It's a choice that we have to make that we can step up and we can say, okay, God, you know what? This, I don't feel like doing this. I don't necessarily feel like this is what I'm supposed to do. I could be doing something else, but by God, because you have spoken to me, because you have called me, because you have chosen me, this is what I am going to choose to do today because courage is a choice, and we all have a choice to make. We all have a choice to say yes or to say no, or I will do, or I will go, or I won't, but it's not a, it's not a feeling. It is a choice that we all make. And I hope you're following along in your notes because I just filled out one of those for you. But judging by the time, how many times that God had to tell Joshua, be strong and be very courageous. Multiple times he had to tell Joshua this, but this only tells me that Joshua had to be discouraged during this time. He had to have discouragement in his life. I believe that the enemy's number one tool in our world today, in our society today, not just in ours, but in theirs too, is to use discouragement to stop you where God is trying to lead you to. How many times have you felt like you were inadequate, you were not inadequate enough to be able to do what God is calling you to? How many times have you felt discouraged to step out in faith and to do something that you felt might be radical? How many times have you felt discouragement that I am not good enough, I'm not qualified enough but how many of you know that God does not call the qualified, but he qualifies the call, or he qualifies the people? He doesn't, he doesn't want the ones that are just qualified. He wants the ones that are willing to go, and that's what Joshua was. Discouraged might be holding you back, but today God might be calling you to something bigger and better. God might be calling you to something more difficult that you might not feel like you're adequate enough to do, but he's gonna give you the tools to be able to do it. And Joshua 1.9 gives that to us. He says, be strong and courageous for I am with you. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. And the land that you take will be yours. Sometimes we just need to be able to stand on those promises that God promises us. And even if we see a mountain in front of us, we need to say, no, God has called me to this. This is not a mountain in front of me. This is a valley. I can walk straight through it because God goes before me. And I have to choose that, I'm gonna, that my next step could be my next breakthrough that my next step would be a next breakthrough as long as I would just take that next step. Sometimes all it takes is one step forward just to say, yes, I will. 
Yes, I will do it. And one time um, in, my, in my younger years, I was working at a, a university called Lee University. I had gotten a job there uh, as a hardware software support. This is tier one level support. Okay, do I have any, any geeks out there? Any, any, any IT people? No IT people today? You just, okay, don't be embarrassed. Come on, you work in IT, you can tell me. I worked in IT hardware software support. I got job support level one. That means if somebody was having a problem printing, I'm the guy you call. You know what I'm saying? You got, you got trouble with your Bluetooth? I'm your man, right? Your Spotify is not working? Call me. I mean, I had the khakis, the red shirt, the polo. I had the, uh, the pocket protector, all the things. I had a little badge that had a little zip on it. It was awesome. I was the man. I was the man. But one day, um, I, I was working there for about six months, and, and my boss had brought me in. He was like, hey, Ryan, uh, I just want to let you know there was an opportunity that came available uh, here in the IT department. And I was just wanting to see if you'd be interested. And I was like, yeah, man, what, what is it? And he was like, well, it's a network administrator position. The guy that was previously working there, he, uh, he had stepped down. And so this guy, he had, he had, uh, he had his degree. He had uh, he, his PhD. Uh, he had his master's. I mean, the guy was brilliant. And so here I am. I do not have a PhD, a pretty hard degree. I do not have uh, a master's. Um, I got none of that, okay? I'm tier one here, okay? This is all I've got. But here, and this guy's like, hey, do you wanna take on this position? And so I'm like, well, what, is all, what does it entail? Like, what am I gonna be doing? He's like, oh, well, you'll be over the network. You'll be over the network switches, the wireless routers, voice over IP. So it's like the IP phone system, the analog and digital phone system. So you'll be making configurations and changes and all those great things. And so I'm like, yeah, uh, that's cool. Um, I don't even know what you just said. I have no idea. <laughs> What, that, what all that means. I don't even know how to log into what you just said. I wouldn't even know how to get into it. And I don't know if you know what a network switch is, but it's literally what allows you to be able to get onto the internet, okay? And so I, I might not have led people like Joshua did, but I could literally turn off the Wi-Fi for like 10,000 students, okay? These are 10,000 college students that I could cut off their Wi-Fi at any moment I wanted to by the power of my index finger. That's serious, y'all. That's like another pandemic that they could be facing. Have you ever seen millennials with no Wi-Fi? Huh? I'm serious. This is a serious moment, right? So it's a big task at hand. But he was like, you know what? I, I, and I, I was so nervous. I was, but inside I'm like, oh, I'm going to do this. But you know, I was so afraid though. But he told me, he told me, he said, Ryan, I, I know your work ethic. I know how hard you work. And, and I know you're a quick learner. You're coachable. You're teachable. I'm going to coach you. I'm going to teach you. I'm going to show you all the things you need to know. I believe in you. I know you can do it. And so and when somebody tells me that, I'm like, okay, yeah, I'm in. I'm in. I might not have been leading a lot of people, but I took a step of faith. All it takes is a step of faith. And in that step of faith, once I went, went I started to work this job. I Googled everything, everything. It was like the power of Google at my hands because it was the only thing that helped me. And also, like I prayed many times too. I'm not even gonna lie. I, I, you can ask my wife to this. I would pray all the time and be like, Lord, please, I do not know how to do this. Please just let this work. And so, and uh, honestly to God, like sometimes, like God would just work out in my favor and things would work. Like I'm, it was crazy how I just took this step and then God would just make miraculous things happen. I have no idea. They were like, how'd you do that? I'm like, I have no idea. <laughs> I don't even know. Like sometimes I would just walk into a, a room and they would have an issue and it would just get fixed. Do you guys ever call the IT department? And then they walk in, you're like, oh, it just worked. They prayed, that's what happened. Guys, they prayed before they came in there and the Lord worked something out. Technology just doesn't just work all of a sudden. It's the Lord that worked through it. But sometimes we have to just take a step of faith. What I learned through all this is that it's okay to fail. It's okay to make mistakes. I'm gonna make a mistake. The biggest mistake that I could make is not taking the step of faith. That's the biggest mistake you could make is not just testing out the waters and seeing what God can do through you. You wanna, you wanna really fail? Don't start. Or you wanna really fail? Just quit just give up. But God has called us to do something differently. Joshua also, if he had not accepted this position, then a multitude of the generations that were with him and then the ones that were following him might not have been led into this promised land. You could have cancel out a generation that could receive the blessing of the Lord if you do not answer what God's calling you to. Joshua could have stopped this by just saying no, but he didn't. He took his step of faith 
We have to have courage. We have to step out into what's unknown. We have to know that God is gonna go before us and that we're gonna be okay and that we're gonna have courage to take us through it. So look at your neighbor and just say, courage is a choice, not a feeling. Now look at your other neighbor that you decided to not talk to and just say, I'm feeling courageous today. Come on. All right, I have four principles for you that we're gonna run through that I, that I believe are gonna help propel you to a courageous life. Now, these are not gonna make you a millionaire. I'm not gonna be like, hey, four steps to make you a millionaire. This is not what this is. This is four principles that you could possibly use and apply to your life that are gonna help you to be successful. I truly believe these four, they're not to answer to everything, but it's gonna help you in a lot. So if you've got your pen, your pad, whatever, I'd like for you to take these notes for what we're gonna learn today. And what we have to see is that fear cannot stop us. Fear is gonna be there. But uh, let me tell you what courage is and what courage is not. Courage is not the absence of fear, but it's the presence of faith. Courage is not the absence of fear. It's the presence of your faith because fear is gonna be there. We're gonna have fear. Fear is what could propel us forward. Let's look at what it says in verse five. It says, no one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. That gives me faith. I might be afraid of the task at hand, but I will let fear propel me because my faith is gonna be much stronger because I know that God is gonna go before me, that no one will be able to stand against me. Our faith can't just be a system of beliefs that don't change or challenge our lives. Our faith is always, always prompts us to help to action, which helps us fully possess the gifts that God has given to us. Even if no one around you believes in you, even if, if, even if people tell you that you're not qualified, even if you have haters that just don't like you, that just tell you like you're not gonna be able to do it. I invite the haters. I want the people to tell me that I can't do it. I enjoy that. My wife does a really good job at this. She uses what's called reverse psychology. You women, you're so intelligent because us men, we have what's called pride, you know? And, and something that uh, you tell us no or we can't do something, we love to try to prove you wrong. Like if there's like a ceiling fan that needs to be replaced, she's like, oh no, you can't, you can't do that. You can't, I'll, I'll call Josh. I'll call our friend that's an electrician. He'll, he'll come over and he'll do it. I'm like, no, 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 no. The Tim, the tool man, Taylor starts to come out. You guys remember that show? Arr, 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 arr. We, we bought this house one time that had, um, it had 25 foot ceilings. And uh, she wanted, every house we go into, we have to paint. So I'm like a, a professional painter also. And so this one had 25 foot ceilings. I'm not used to going up that high and painting. And so she's like, oh, no, you can't. You can't do that. We'll have to, we'll, we'll hire somebody to do it. I'm like, no, 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 no. I am painting the ceiling. I am doing this. And guess what? I painted that wall. It might have had some gray going along the ceiling, but I did it, right? But I challenge the haters. I challenge the doubt. I want to be able to prove. You guys have to have put something inside of you. It's like, you know what? I might not be able to do it great, but I'm gonna put a little bit of faith inside of me that's gonna allow me to do it because I've done, I messed up so much that I'm like, you know what? What, what could go wrong? It's just a wall. It's just electricity. You get shocked. I mean, then what? Then what? I've learned my lesson. Turn the power off before you touch it, right? There's always lessons to be learned. It's, it's failure whenever I quit or I don't try to take the chance to do it. But I have to take the chance. We have to take the chance. You have to take the next step. It can't just be us that is, that is always trying to direct our own paths, I can't always just choose like, you know what, I, didn't, I don't want to do it. I just, I'm going to do it this way. I want to choose my own path. But Proverbs 3, 5 through 6 says this. It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not lean on your own understanding, but all your ways acknowledge him and he will make your paths straight. You trust in the Lord, not yourself. We ask for wisdom. If you're like me, you're not the sharpest tool in the shed. And sometimes we just need a lot of wisdom. But the Bible says to ask God for wisdom because he gives it freely. And if God gives wisdom freely, then what stops us from just asking God to help us and to give us freely? What, what stops us from asking God, like, God, let me do this your way, Father. 
Father, give me courage to be able just to, to do, even if I don't know how, God, give me courage and give me wisdom to be able to do it. It is, courage is letting go of what you cannot control and making it a daily choice. Courage is letting go of what you cannot control, but making a daily choice to do things God's way. That's your next point. Courage is a daily choice to do things God's way. In verse seven and eight, it says, be very strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave to you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left, but that you may be successful wherever you go. Courage is a daily choice to do things God's way. Again, Joshua is reminded of being very courageous. We have to be careful to obey the law and to meditate on it every day. It's, it's the only command that we have that has a promise. It says, follow me, meditate on my word every day, and then what? You'll be successful. You will be successful. It doesn't say you might be successful. It's that you will be successful. It's almost like with your kids, right? With your children. Anybody got children? You got young children, they know, especially teenagers, they know it all, right? You don't really know much. I mean, You've only lived 42 years. I mean, what do you know? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But I mean, you have kids that you try to tell like, no, 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 don't do it this way. You need to follow this path. I'm, I'm telling you, this is what you need to do. No, dad, you don't know. You don't know what it's like living in this day and age. Okay, okay. But then, but then, yeah. smack, you know what I'm saying? They fail and you're like, I told you so. I told you. That's like my favorite word that I could say, I told you so. It's the same way with following in God's path. Sometimes we want to go on our own path. We end up like the Israelites, and we just, we just find ourselves just going in a circle for like 40 years, just aimlessly wandering around like your kids do when they go to clean the room, and they come out, and they never even clean the room. They're just in the room. Like, what'd you do? I was in my room. Not even, you know what I'm saying? But we have to follow what God's Word says. We have to follow it, but we also have to meditate on it. Now, Joshua had, he had five books. They had the Pentateuch and the Torah to be able to go by. This is what they meditated on. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Now, some of this that they're reading is all about them. It's the story that they're able to tell. What story are you able to tell? But they look back at these things and see in Genesis, he said, Adam and Eve, they were deceived and disobeyed God and, and the fall of man began. That's what we can learn from there. There's so much more in Genesis. That's just one part. So many things you can learn from people, from the mistakes that other people have made and also from the successes that they've made. Exodus, God calls to Moses to lead the Israelites out of slavery, but Moses doesn't believe in himself because he has a disability. Sometimes we stop ourselves because of a disability that we have. But your faith in God has to propel you forward to overcome those things because it's not you that's doing it, it's God that's doing it. Leviticus, God is giving his people instructions on how to live a holy life. Numbers, the, the people com, uh, complained about God and God rained down fire and burned them. Some of y'all need to stop your complaining all the time. It's too hot in here. It's too cold in here. I don't like the worship music. Why does Pastor Todd always wearing blue jean jackets? I don't know. Just stop complaining. He's going through a midlife crisis. We can't help that. Deuteronomy, the blessings of obedience. God, this is the last time they're going to ask me to preach. This could be good. I might as well go out with a bang. You know what I'm saying? All right. Deuteronomy, the blessings of obedience. God will set you high above the nations of the earth, and the blessings shall come upon you and overtake you if you obey the voice of the Lord. Meditate on the word, and you will know your God. You know my word when you know me. If you obey my word, you will be successful. That's what Deuteronomy is speaking. And then we go over to Joshua, and we see it in the same words. The same things, they're speaking it again. It's all throughout the scripture. If you want to know how to, great, have, how to have great friendships, meditate on the word. If you want to know how to have a great marriage, meditate on the word. If you want to know how to run a great business, meditate on the word. It's simple. So many mistakes and so many successes that were made that we find here. If you want to live a courageous life and stop doing it your way, follow God's word. You know, my wife has been raised in church her whole life, and, 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 um, and prior to us getting married, I had an experience where God had spoken to me, and whenever we got married, I didn't tell her about this experience. And so God had spoke to me and told me, I will lead the multitude of the children to the kingdom. 
And so God had called me to a purpose and this purpose I'm, I'm now living out. But whenever we got married, I told my wife about this purpose that God had spoken to me. And so she was like, Ryan, if I would have known that, I never would have married you. But thankfully for my good looking charm, <laughs> hook, line and sinker, she's in. But she had been raised in church her whole life. Her, her father is a pastor and now he's an overseer in our denomination. And, but whenever you're raised in church, you see some things that, that can hurt you. And you see how your, your family hurts, you see how your parents will hurt, and you see the struggles of life that they go through. And so this had brought some discouragement to her. But through all that fear that she had, she knew that if God had called us, we couldn't stop what God had called us to. So she made a, a charge to me. She said, if we're gonna do this, we're gonna do this God's way. We're not gonna do this our way. And we're not gonna reach out to a church for, for a position or for opportunity. If God has called us somewhere, he will call us to that place. And so here we are, I've, I've been full-time ministry for nine years, I've been here at the Creek going on five years, and we've been to three different churches, this being our third church, and we have never, not one time, reached out to another church for opportunity. God has always directed our path opened up the door every single time. I could tell you the three stories that are only God stories because we have simply said, God, we let go of this and we give it all to you because I can't, I can't do it. I can't do it on my own. God, you direct my path. God, you open up the doors that you have for me. I release all of who I am and what I am and I give it all to you. And some of it, you just have to let go of yourself. It's not so much of that you can't do it, it's just that you're stopping yourself from doing it. You have to let go of you because you can't work it out all on your own. God will work it all out for you. And your courage will only grow whenever you can rest in the promises that God has given to you. And this is your next point, that courage grows when we rest in God's promises. You deny yourself, you have to surrender yourself and just say, God, I know what you've promised me and I give it to you. It says this in verse three, 13 through 15, remember the command that Moses, the servant of the Lord gave you after he said, the Lord your God will give you rest by giving you this land. Your wives and your children and your livestock may stay in the land that Moses gave you east of the Jordan, but all your fighting men ready for battle must cross over ahead of your fellow Israelites. You're to help them until the Lord gives them rest as they have done for you and until they have taken possession of the land the Lord your God is giving them. After that, you may go back and occupy your own land, which Moses, the servant of the Lord, gave you east of the Jordan towards the sunrise. We rest in his promises. We're giving a task. Once you complete the task, the promise is yours. This is what I love about this. God speaks it, you gotta believe it. Don't worry about the who, the what, the when, the where, and the how. But say, God, I rest in your word. God, I will do what you have called me to do. This is what I love about this one scripture, though. It says, you're to help them until the Lord gives them rest, until you've taken possession of this land. This is a reminder for us that we're not alone. We're not meant to reign in victory alone. Our battles are not alone, but we need people that will help us fight the battles that we're facing. I believe that this is a call to serve. I believe that he's telling them, yes, you're gonna receive your promised land, but you gotta take your men and you have to go help someone else receive theirs first. This is a call to serve. And I don't know if God is calling you to serve. It might, it might be in the military. It might be in your local church. It might be in your local community. It might be at a dream center. It might even be in student ministry or in Creek Kids because we would absolutely love to have you there for more teachers, more worship leaders, more small group leaders and all those great things. And just to wave and say hi to kids. It could be your call to serve. God could be calling you to something just to serve. God wants to use you, but courage, it's when we're not doing something just for ourselves, but and we're not expecting anything else in return, but we're here just to help someone else. Courage is being able to remove yourself and just let God take our lead. If we wanna be a person of courage, our courage is displayed by following God wherever he leads, wherever he leads you. 
And it says this in 16 through 18, they answered Joshua, whatever you have commanded us, we will do. Wherever you send us, we will go. Just as we followed Moses, we will obey you. Only may the Lord your God be with you as he was with Moses. Whoever rebels against your word and does not obey it, whatever you command them will be put to death. Only be strong and courageous. You have to be courage and stand up for other people. You have to be, courage courage is saying courageous words. Courage is being a word of encouragement, not discouragement. Courage is being a voice for the voiceless. Courage is standing up for those that stand down. Courage is taking up for those that can't take up for themselves. Courage is being there for other people and helping them to see them to be successful. That's courage. Courage is displayed whenever we follow God, wherever he leads you to go, wherever God is sending you to, you're trusting in him and following him. I know this, I know that I wanna have, as the scripture says, that people that will be with me and they'll help me to see me go wherever I need to go, where God is leading me to, and that they will not complain, but they will choose courage over rebellion. They'll choose loyalty over rebellion. Now, on my team, I, I tell them this story. I, I read a book, it's called Good to Great. It's, it's good, it's not great. But in one of the chapters, it talks about the school bus. And the school bus theory is this. And so everybody on my team has the school bus. I give them this uh, and they put it in their office just as a reminder because the church is a lot like this school bus. Sometimes it's uncomfortable. Sometimes it's hot and sweaty. Sometimes the air conditioner doesn't work. Sometimes the windows won't roll down and sometimes it's just an uncomfortable ride. But I want people on this bus that wherever it's going, wherever it's traveling to, I want people that's on the bus that's not gonna complain about the bus, but they're gonna help the bus. So if the bus were to break down and were to stop, they're not gonna sit on the bus and they're not gonna complain and say, oh, the bus is broken down. This is a horrible bus. No, I want people that's on this bus that's gonna get out and they're gonna push it. And they're gonna continue to help see it go where it needs to go. That's courage stepping out and helping. And if they're not, you gotta get the wrong people out of your bus. You gotta tell them it's time. You're not going where I'm going. You're not, you're, not, you're, not, you're not taking the steps that we're taking to be able to get there. You might have some people in your life that aren't taking you where you need to go. You might have some people in your life that are discouraging you and not encouraging you. And sometimes you just gotta tell them, don't let the door hit you where the good Lord split you. Sorry. And sometimes we have to have people in our life that say, you know what? I'm going to help you. I'm going to help you. I'm going to follow you. I'm going to help see you be successful. I'm going to follow God wherever He leads us. I'm going to trust in Him. I'm going to trust Him. Together, we'll do this together. So the question today is, where is God calling you? Where is he calling you to be courageous? And who's on your bus? Who's on your team? Are you surrounding yourself with the people that need to be surrounded with that's gonna help you to be where God is calling you to be? I believe that today we need a Joshua generation that's gonna raise up. This is, this is a call of a Joshua generation that will raise up the same way that this Joshua generation did and stepped up to answer the call and said, you know what, send me, I will go. Send me, I will do. You need something, I'm here for you. We have a church that's here that reaches thousands of people every single Sunday. I'm not saying that you have to serve here. I'm just saying that we make a very large impact in this church and at our local Dream Center. And God might be calling you to serve. It might not be here. I don't, I don't care if it's here. I'm just asking you, like, where is God calling you? Where, what is God leading you to? How do you need to live a courageous life? Like, what is it that God is calling you to do that you can live courageously and just trust in Him and just say, God, I know that you have ordered my steps. I know that I'm following you and you're gonna lead and guide and direct me. Where is it in your life that God is calling you to? Maybe like you just graduated high school, some of our seniors just graduated this past weekend. Maybe you just graduated and you're like, you know what, I have no idea what I'm supposed to do. I don't even know where I'm supposed to go to college. I don't, I don't know. That's okay, but God does. Just give it to him. 
Maybe you've been roaming aimlessly for five, 10, 15 years in your own personal wilderness and you're still not sure like where to go, but God just wants you to say, you know what, I just give this to you. Maybe you have a business that's going under and that you just need a little bit of help and you, and you need to take another step of faith. God just wants you to know that he's going with you. You just have to be courageous enough to stop doing it on your own and just do it God's way and just choose to do better, choose to follow him and what he's called you to do. God is calling you to step up. God is calling you to make a choice. Do you wanna settle for the good or do you wanna settle for God's best? Do you wanna settle for good? Eh, it's all right. Or do you wanna settle for God's best? Do you want a successful life? Follow God's word. Too many people are taking an easy break and the easy way out when we need a Joshua generation to stand up and to push forward and to show an example so that the generation that comes after us will see what it truly means to have God create miracles because Joshua saw the miracles that God created through Moses. You might have a seed that is stopping you from your destiny, but God is ready to part it. He parted the water so that they could cross over to the Jordan and get to their promised land from the enemies that were chasing after him. You might have enemies chasing behind you and you might have walls out in front of you, but God is ready to break those down. Are you willing to step out and say, I will trust you? Today's last question is this. Today, I choose to blank. I just want you to write that down. What do you choose to do today? I want you to make a decision today on God. Today, I choose to do this. Even if you're not sure what it is, like God, I choose to do whatever you want me to do. How about that for a step of faith? I don't know what it is, but I'll do whatever you want. I'll do whatever you want. In my prayer, before I started to go out into ministry, I, and I didn't know what it was, I didn't know where I would go or what it looked like, I used to just say, I would pray, God, I'll do whatever you want me to do. I'll go wherever you want me to go. Whatever it is, I'll do it. Wherever you call me to, I'll go there. You just tell me to go. You tell me where to go and I'll go. You tell me what to do and I'll do it. That has to be your focus. So what will you choose to do today? I pray that you'll choose courage. Today, your courage might just be stepping out in faith. You might've been struggling with your faith and, and not living your life for the Lord, but today you wanna take the step of courage just to give him your life today. Today, I wanna help you in taking those next steps and taking a step to courage. Will you bow your head and pray with me? And let's pray encouraging prayers to God. God, today, I pray that we live courageously. I pray that we live so courageously that we just give up all that we are and just give it all to you. So today, right now, our prayer to you, Father, is that you will empty us of us and you will fill us with you, that we will be filled with your presence and your power and your Holy Spirit and you will begin to lead and guide and direct us in what you've called us to do. We release ourselves to you, Father, and we give it all to you. We lay our life down to the foot of the cross and we say, Jesus, it's yours, take it. Now, if you are the one that would like to choose courage to step out in faith, God, we just wanna pray this prayer. Heavenly Father, I have sinned and I have failed. I have failed you. My God, I am here and I'm asking you to forgive me. God, wash me clean of my sin. Forgive me of all the wrong that I've done. Thank you, Lord, for dying on the cross for my sins and being raised again, risen again from the dead. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. God, I wanna live for you for eternity. God, use me for your glory. God, now help us to live a courageous life that's built upon trust and faith in you and what you could do through us. In Jesus' name, everybody said, amen, amen. Thank you guys so much.